Hey everybody, Christopher Naiman. Well, I wanted to uh, give you a little more video on surging with a surging table. This is uh, just a homemade table that I made. I have two of them that I make because I have two sergers. And uh, I just wanted to show you in a video how easy it is to sew when you have a flatbed surface around your serger so nothing hangs and drags, just like a sewing machine. All right, stay with me, I'll show you. Don't go away, I'll be right back, everybody. All right, this, this video is just a quick tip for you guys. All right, so a lot of newbies are coming into sewing, which is fabulous. Welcome, newbies, welcome. You know, you've got so much to learn and take your time learning. Don't try to rush anything. Um, remember, sewing is a professional craft. It really is, it, it takes skill. It takes knowledge and skill to know what you're doing. You're operating a machine, so you have to learn the machine. Like driving a car or working in a mechanic factory. You know, you go to school and you learn things. Now, a lot of you are learning on your own. I learned on my own, but I really didn't learn on my own. I did exactly what you're doing, watching videos. But I didn't have the internet back then. I had PBS on TV and I bought videos in the back of sewing magazines. And one of the great videos uh, series that I started buying was by Islander Sewing and it was on industrial methods of sewing and she used a basic mechanical Viking sewing machine recessed into a flatbed table and her, arms, her arm placements and the way she sewed and held the fabric was all based on industrial sewing methods because she studied that in Los Angeles. Fast forward many years later, we've got YouTube. On YouTube, we can watch people sewing in factories, and you see those people, they're sewing so fast, and they're never using pins or nothing. And you look at what they're, how they're sewing, and they've got a flatbed surface around most of the machines. Spe some specialty machines they, they have where they have to hold the fabric this, but if you're going to want to have better results at home, you want to have a, a flatbed surface around your sewing machine or around your serger. So people say, well, why do I need it around my serger? Well, I don't have a knit fabric, but say you had some knit fabric and you're surging without the table on, it's going to drag, it's going to stretch, it's going to pull. It's not as, it won't go as fluently and easily as having the flatbed surface when you surge. And listen guys, I am not a uh, I am not a master woodsman. I don't, you know, I'm not a master at craftsman with wood. So if I could build a, a sewing table, so can you. It's no big deal. You just have to go online and watch some PBS shows on this old house and stuff and just study, just like sewing. You know, it takes time. It takes time. And it's, when they say, why are old people wise? is because we had so many years to learn. And when we try to help you guys, listen to us because we're trying to tell you, hey, Read your manual, study, take your time, stop being in a rush. If you're gonna be in a rush, you're gonna screw up, you're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna say the hell of it. I did that when I was 21. I'm gonna tell you, when I was 21, I was in a rush, I wanted to make a bathrobe, I wanted to hurry, I wanted to get through it. And boy, I chose the most hard project. I cho chose velour that was so thick to try to sew under a sewing machine kept jamming it up, kept screwing it up, and I just put it to the side until years later when I wanted to sew for my home, and then I started discovering C uh, PBS TV shows on sewing. I recorded those sewing shows every day and watched them every day. I'd go in my sewing room, I'd play the video, I'd practice the technique, pause the video, look at the technique. That's how I learned, you know? So don't be in a rush and don't feel like a failure if you don't accomplish something on the first try. You have to start at the beginning. You have to learn the mechanics of your machine. You have to know your machine. That's why even me, look, I'm going to show you. Even under my table here, let me pull all my accessories out here. Even under my table here, I keep my instruction manual. I always keep my instruction manual and for a serger, I have samples here, sample pages with settings. And this is what I've done throughout the years. I set up a uh, a, a sample page book here and the page book I, I write down what the looper was what this and I have a, a sample here this is this is something you guys might want to do right you might want to do this so it's very very important to do this and keep your instruction manual right with you at your sewing machine 
okay? So you see here, I've got my instruction manual. I've got all my information. I have, uh, here you go. See, like, this is this is a Singer uh, machine. This actually used to be under the white brand. Actually, this, this particular model is under many different brand names. You know, they, they've remodeled this, but it's the same serger. It's the same serger. It's the one where the front part opens this way. I think even Baby Lock has a version of this now with this same basic serger. So, but this has been under many different brand names. Uh, it's under Viking. Viking has the same serger. Recar, Family So, you know, they all share machines because they're all made in the same factory. All right, so now that I got that under the way, so just let me give you a demo. I demoed this before in one of my other videos, but I wanted to show you again because I see so many newbies out there struggling. They're asking questions. And listen, guys, please, don't try, don't try to be like Superman or Superwoman all in the first day. I had a gentleman that messaged me and said, I bought an industrial sewing machine. What knob do I use to set my machine so it doesn't pucker or this and that? And I asked him, I said, why are you messaging me personally on my personal um, message? Um, if you bought a machine, you need to study it. It's just not something like, oh, just tell me what button to push so I can do it. It's not a coffee machine. It's not a coffee machine where you put the water in, you press the button, and then it goes. There's so much to learn. And it's almost insulting when someone writes you and starts asking those kind of questions like, oh, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Oh, it's not, that's not worth a $100 class to learn that. Do you know how much money people put in to learn their craft and why they're so good at what they do? Because they invested in it. You invest in your education. Time and money is an investment to learn whatever you want to do. And if you're not willing to do that and you're taking this as a joke like, let me just push the button on a coffee machine and let it go. That's, you're never going to succeed at it. <laughs> you're going to have to pay someone to do this stuff for you. So take your time to learn. And when someone like me and other people come along and say, hey, we're going to show you some tips, we're doing it to help you guys. These are the free tips we're willing to help you to give you along the way. You have to do the rest. You have to read. You have to study. You have to practice on your own. And there's no magic button you push that's going to make it all perfect. You still have to understand the mechanics. You still need to study the machine, read the manual, watch videos, learn everything about your machine so you understand why there's thread nesting in here because you miss threading it on top properly. Or um, people that are pulling the fabric out and they're jamming it and they're breaking it and they're like, why did my machine do this? Well, you were kind of rough with it when you pulled it out. You see videos where you see these people putting videos online and they're slamming the foot down like this. Like, why are you pushing that down so hard? You want to bust it? You know, so people are getting, you know, I, I, I watch and I listen and I observe and it's like, well, no wonder your machine broke because you destroyed it. So be gentle. Be gentle and understand. If you're going to get frustrated, walk away. Don't destroy that machine. If you're going to get frustrated, walk away. Because if you don't want anything to do with it after that, give this machine to someone who will take the time to take care of it and read how to use it. Does that understand? Okay, no more preaching. Let's just show you how this works. So industrial sewing you've got the fabric here on the flatbed you're always holding your hands like this in industrial sewing this is how they teach us no different than when you surge and then you just go right ahead and it's blowing along and you see i'm not fighting this fabric on the left here i'm not fighting it it's not dragging off the bed it's it's laying and i'm having smooth sailing as they so to speak there's no there's no white caps there's no waves there's no, there's no uh, to tsunami here and this is the nice way uh, that you're gonna have frustration where you oh I gotta hang on to this and it's dragging why is my fabric all wrinkly or stretchy why this and that this is one of the reasons this is one of the reasons and on your sergers they have differential feed so if you've got knits that you're sewing and your knit starts to stretch or pucker you set your differential feed and what is differential free feed? That is in your instruction manual. And there's videos to teach you how all about that. It's something you have to learn. Remember, take this craft seriously. It is a serious craft. Because when people sew for a living, they have to know what they're doing. And it's a professional craft. Just like a, a, a mechanic on a car. You can't fix a car, so you, you dread going to the mechanic because it's going to cost you money. Why is it going to cost you money to go to the mechanic? Because they studied their craft and they know what they're doing. And they can fix what you don't know how to do. Think of sewing the same way. If you want to do things that no one else can do, you need to study and go to school and practice. You see? 
because every trade can be a craftsman of, um, you could become a master at it and you could do things no one else is doing and they'll hire you to do it because they see the quality of your work. They see what you're able to do. And when your name gets out there in your local community and you start promoting yourself that way, people will be calling you and they won't say, oh, she charges $20 just to hem the jeans. They're going to say, man, she does a great job in those jeans. You know, 20 bucks. Someone else will say, 20 bucks? Yeah. Well, I went to this girl down the street. She has a sewing machine. Oh, look how she screwed up my, my jeans. What'd you pay? $5. Go to my girl. She's 20 bucks. Go to my guy. He's 20 bucks. And he's worth it. You see what I'm saying? All right. Here we go. And this machine has a little uh, scissor cutter there. And then see, that's how easy it is. That's how easy it is. That's why extension tables and flatbed services are so important for your machines. All right, I hope I gave you enough information to make you think. Think about how this craft can be so amazing for you. You know, it's not just a housewife or a house husband hobby. It's a serious craft. If it was not serious, everyone would be making their own clothes. But people go to the stores and buy their clothes off the rack. Why? Because most people can't do it. They can't do it. They don't have that skill. And so when you have to buy something you can't make or fix, that's because someone else has a skill at doing what you cannot. And that's a value. That is a value. Remember that. So practice your craft so you can be of value. All right, guys, take care. I hope that helped you understand more about the art of sewing and being a craftsman at the sewing machine. Love you all. Take care. Bye.